Atlanta Falcons faced a must-win situation in Week 17 and took care of business to sneak into the NFC playoffs and have a chance to repeat as NFC champions. The task at hand is not an easy one, as the Falcons travel cross-country on a short week to take on the NFC West champion Los Angeles Rams, who used last week as a pseudo-bye week to rest up for this wildcard weekend event. As a result, we've seen some initial investment on the Rams, with the line opening at 4.5, but now going up to 5.5 pretty much industry-wide. The Falcons went 10-6 but needed every one of those 10 wins to qualify for the playoffs in the top-heavy NFC. Atlanta was just 7-9 against the spread in what was honestly a disappointing season, which is hard to say with 10 wins. After last season's statistical dominance, the Falcons rarely looked the part of a top contender. But the slate will be wiped clean for the wildcard weekend. Atlanta is 7-3 over its last 10 games, but 5-5 five five against the spread in that span. The Falcons are a dangerous team to face in the playoffs. Even though Atlanta finished 15th in points, the Falcons were tied for third in yards per play with 5.9. The Falcons just had horrible issues in the red zone, ranging from untimely turnovers to drop passes and just about everything in between. A team with as much talent as Atlanta and a future Hall of Famer in Julio Jones should never go just 50% in the red zone over the course of the season, but that's what the loss of an offensive guru like Kyle Shanahan can do. The Falcons missed his play design in non-Super Bowl play calling. The Falcons were the top team in the NFL on third down, so this is definitely a scary offense to go up against. Matt Ryan wasn't as comfortable in his Steve Sarkisian offense. After a career year in 2016, he had a 20 to 12 touchdown interception ratio in 2017. The Falcons were more effective running the ball with 5.3 yards per carry and seemed to force offensive balance a bit too much at times, rather than leave things up to Ryan. Either way, this is an offense that moved the ball with relative ease and extended drives, but had problems finishing off drives. In smaller samples like the playoffs, a positive regression to the mean in the red zone with an already potent offense could create some upsets. While the offense was down 0.8 yards per play from last season, the defense was a half a yard per play better this season. Head coach Dan Quinn has all of the personnel in place that he needs. The formula is quite simple in today's NFL. Get some guys that can rush, have a stud middle linebacker and a stud safety. The Falcons check all of those boxes with Vic Beasley, Adrian Claiborne, Deion Jones, and Keanu Neal. The Falcons did their best to cancel out their offensive red zone woes by being the fifth best defense inside of the 20. One glaring issue for the Falcons was that they only forced 16 turnovers, which was tied for 27th. But that makes the defensive performance that much more impressive without the luxury of takeaways. Defensive coordinator Marquan Manuel has a lot of skill position talent to contend with here. The Los Angeles Rams went 11-5 and, and won the NFC West for the first time since the greatest show on turf has been a thing. The Rams have not lost consecutive games this season, but have dropped three of the last four against the spread. It is fair to say that there will be some skeptics out there about the Rams this week. Jared Goff is playing in the brightest spotlight that he has ever experienced. First-year head coach Sean McVay has done this song and dance as an offensive coordinator but he hasn't been front and center as a head coach. Goff completed 62.1% of his throws with a 28-7 touchdown interception ratio. Todd Gurley ran for over 1,300 yards. McVay molded a lot of raw talent into a top offense. The Rams led the NFL in points scored this season, but ranked tied for seventh in yards per play below the Falcons. The Rams weren't even that great in the red zone with a 55.1% success rate. Even though the Falcons were forced to play out last week's game, the Rams may be in worse injury shape, with Cooper Cup questionable for the week, and Roger Saffold also labeled as questionable. Kicker Greg Zerlane is also out, which is an injury that carries increased importance in the postseason. The Rams' defense allowed 5.3 yards per play, so they also trailed Atlanta in that department. The big difference is that the Rams had 28 takeaways, which ranked fifth in the NFL and opponents only scored on 30.6% of their possessions as a result. Defensive coordinator Wade Phillips will be a tremendous asset for McVay in this game and throughout the duration of the Rams' stay in the playoffs, much like he was during the regular season. One concern in this game, though, is how well Atlanta ran the football against a very porous Rams rush defense. The Rams were sixth in adjusted net yards per pass attempt 
and had 48 sacks, which ranked fourth. But Los Angeles had the second worst defense in the NFL from a yards per carry standpoint. With a balanced Atlanta offense coming to town, how will Phillips structure his defense? The early move on this game looks like a setup to push the line and come back later in the week at higher limits. The spot is not ideal for Atlanta coming off a must-win game with cross-country travel on a short week, but the Falcons stack up really nicely from a statistical standpoint. Turnovers and red zone success were the two biggest differences between these teams. In a one-game sample in the playoffs, there is a little more variance in play. Playoff rookie quarterback Jared Goff is going to see a solid defense here, coached by one of the best defensive minds in the NFL in Dan Quinn. The Falcons are set up well to pull off an upset, but take the points just to be safe. Our pick and prediction will be for the Atlanta Falcons at plus five and a half. For our pick and prediction on this game and every other game this week, and a wealth of free stats and information, check out bangthebook.com.